This is Officer Hellman and Officer Taylor again, and today we're going to talk about police contacts. If you should, for some reason, be contacted by an officer, um, we want you to kind of have some tools in your belt so that um, if something should happen, that you'll understand the reasons why. So this is what we're going to call our conversation and the talk segment of our um, program. We're going to talk about what, we're going to talk about why, we're going to talk about reactions, and we're going to talk about the needs, why things get done the way they do. And to start this whole thing, we're going to watch a video which kind of gives us a good <laughs> overview of how something could go wrong but didn't. <laughs> A 17-year-old is alive today because of a judgment call made by a Duncanville police officer who thought the teenager had a gun. He did have a gun, but it was a BB gun, and the officer didn't know it. This all happened Saturday, as Fox 4's Sean Rabb reports. What would have been a horrible tragedy, like others seen across the country, was avoided by a split-second judgment call. Sixteen year Duncanville officer Ben Luna first to respond. The call continued. And the caller was still looking at him. This is where I made contact with the uh, three male subjects. As he drives up, look at the kid in the gray right of your screen. Looks back, sees the officer. What was that move in his waistband? But that's what law enforcement we call a furtive gesture, and it's highly concerning, particularly given the comments on this call. Luna exits his squad car, yelling commands. The trio not obey commands, and Luna says he's thinking they're fixing it to uh, either pull the gun out or they don't really care what what I'm saying. He says it's a fake gun, but Luna's wondering. He's just trying to distract me, looking at him, and these two could pull out a weapon. I'm not for sure. And your heart's pumping now. Yes, it is. Her says as the team approaches, though hands are up, the officer's at a disadvantage because action always beats reaction. Even though the officer has his gun drawn, he's on target. If this man chooses from this position to draw and fire, he can draw and fire before the officer can see that, perceive that, and stroke the truth. Finally, the kid in the gray follows instructions and goes to the ground. The picture at the top is what police found on the kid, a BB gun. It's a replica of a Beretta 92F. This is a picture of a real Beretta 92F. In the flash of an eye, could you tell the difference between those two? No way. For Officer Van Luna, it was a closer than close decision. This could have been bad for this for this young kid. Um, I'm, I'm so happy that I didn't have to pull the trigger. Well, uh, Steve Duncanville, Duncanville Police said what was avoided. Here's the kind of tragedy that took place in Cleveland, Ohio. With Tamir Rice, you recall, was shot at a police officer with a BB gun. The officer answered the 911 call. All right, I want to go back to the video. I think people want to see that again. Two things that strike me. First, if it, I was watching the guy in the gray hoodie the whole time. Mm -hmm. But if you look while he's finally going down, the guy in the red is turning, and there's so many stuff going on. Their the hands are up. He's turned away, grabbing something in his pocket. You said it would be an eye pot. But tell me, what is going on? Can we spread the word? If an officer has his gun out, pointed at you, yelling at you, you are a second away from getting shot. Absolutely. That's what he said. Now, and that's the point that the Duncanville police want to make here, a teaching moment for everybody. As you see here, at the end of the day, uh, Duncanville police called the parents of these kids. Their parents and some other uh, guardians came out. They weren't happy with the kids. They were grateful to police, but and, and so I'm sure they got a lesson from mom and dad and aunt and uncle. But the point is, you got an officer with a gun pointed at you, yelling commands, and you're not obeying. And the kid in the red... Him, walking toward him is not diminishing their threat, it's increasing it. And then you look at the kid in the red, and the kid, this, they don't have their hands up, turns he turns right. sideways, he's in his pocket. Yeah. It turns out to be an iPod in his pocket, but you know, the officer doesn't know, is he reaching for a gun, or what? So uh, it was the experience and the restraint of Ben Luna in that moment that saved a great tragedy in our city. Good work. Okay. Good Thank you. All right. With that video, kind of shows 
some of the challenges that you face as a police officer. I know that a lot of kids' mindsets are what's well, only. Oh, somebody call a cop because they get. Sorry. Sorry about that. Miss that. Um, our job is innately dangerous. I mean, the calls that we get, the contacts that we make, the traffic stops, the domestic calls that we go on, I mean, it's just a roll of the dice. Is everything going to be okay, or is this going to be one of those situations that becomes fluid and dangerous quickly? So with that in our mindset, and we're trained, you know, try to ferret out the danger. Obviously, in that situation, you had multiple people. The, day, the gun could have been passed. It could be a real gun, multiple suspects with guns. And you don't know what people have done before you contacted them. So you got a caller who thinks they're suspicious, already is saying, hey, they got a gun, and we're going out on that with that kind of mindset. We're not saying, oh, it's just some kids jacking around. We can't do that with the robberies and the murders that we have in this. In, this is a metropolitan area. We have those commonly. So our mindset is a little bit different. For those who drive, we're going to just kind of go over some good rules because this um, tends to be a huge issue sometimes in our world when we make traffic stops. So for those of you that drive, if you should be ever stopped by the police, the first thing is do not get out of the vehicle. It poses a number of things for us. One is you getting run over. Um, the second is if someone's going to shoot us almost 100% of the time they have to get out of the vehicle to do it. Very hard to sit in your seat and turn around and shoot though it's been done. It makes more sense for, for them to get out of the vehicle. Follow the officer's instructions. Everybody wants to know what they did wrong. As soon as you get up there, uh, what officer would I do wrong? If the officer's telling you to put your hands in view, there's a reason for that. Maybe they had a call of a robbery in progress in the area. Your car fits the description and you fit the description, because descriptions are very broad when uh, they come out on, on the police radio. White male, five, four, uh, 130 pounds can be a guy six one one eighty. 180. So we have to kind of use a wide scope when we're dealing with that. So make sure you follow the officer's instructions. There might be things going on that you're not aware of. Be respectful and speaking calmly, screaming at the police, never helps anybody solve any issue. I mean, they're going to tell you why they stopped you. They're going to tell you whether they felt you ran a stop sign, whether you ran a red line, whether you're speeding. The whole, they're going to let you know what they believe. You know, if the vehicle is a suspect, fits a description of a suspect vehicle in a robbery, the officers are going to tell you. So if you just say, you know, get, get your information out and answer questions, and if they haven't gotten to the point of why I've been stopped, then you can ask respectfully and calmly. Do not make sudden moves and keep hands visible. Hands kill, that's our, our thought process. No one's ever shot an officer with their foot, you know, or with their bad attitude, but hands kill. So that's the number one thing we wanna be able to see your hands. That means you can't take a phone call while you're on the traffic stop. Uh, why are we contacted by the police? I know your social life is very important to us as well, but while we're doing our business, we really need to keep the focus on that. Um, reaching for your wallet, that kind of thing. Make sure the officer knows what you're doing so that they don't get the wrong idea. Uh, you don't need to dig in your glove box for all of your paperwork that's outdated. Um, wait for the officer to ask you, do you have your insurance? Do you have Usually it's just insurance and a driver's license because we don't do a lot of registration stuff on a traffic stop very often. Uh, ask permission before you reach for anything. Keep valid ID on you. That's very important because if you don't and you're 17, you could go to jail if you're operating a motor vehicle and we can't prove who you are. Um, us at the school, we have a lot of avenues and a lot of luxury here because they have your information and we're able to network with them to be able to contact people to verify who you are. Out on the street at three in the morning, they're not gonna have that kind of luxury. Especially at night, turn on the interior light, that just helps the officer say, okay, there's two people, there's three people, there's one guy, you know, 
and obviously he's getting off work because he's in his you know his business attire for whatever job he does that kind of thing uh, keep a license and insurance at a convenient place the worst kind of traffic stop but late at night on the freeway someone digging around trying to find something you know I need your insurance I know it's here somewhere and there's like five it's like your backpacks <laughs> you know what I mean we dig through there and there's all kind of stuff stuffed everywhere try to keep those you know in a place you can get it <coughs> are you with an officer on the street because you didn't feel like you deserved the ticket or uh, the officer was rude or you felt like someone for some reason that you were unfairly treated honestly arguing with the officer on the street and it, they've got their course to go and you've got your course to go if you feel like it's been unfair or you want to make a complaint we have a professional standards that used to be called internal affairs but now we're professional standards division and they take all the complaints and they're either filtered to our supervisors or if they feel the complaint is at, of a higher level then they may investigate themselves the community has a the community has a right to expect that all citizens are treated fairly you know like I told you before we began this there isn't somebody that we're targeting most of the times stuff comes to us you know somebody has a complaint against you or somebody said you know they did this or they did that or you somehow drew attention so make sure that you know all things are taken into consideration why am I being in here you should, for us I know especially in a school setting we 100% explain everything complaints are investigated and the results are explained so if for some reason you were contacted by an officer and you felt like whatever the situation was was not fair unjust they violated your your rights that um, the professional standards or our supervisor will call you back after investigating and explains what the results were of that investigation officers are held accountable for their actions as you can see the tide has turned really big on that because um, a lot of stuff is in the public eye now and they're really holding you know making sure you're walking that line doing the right thing for the people the ultimate goal for the police and the community is that we partner to make Irving a safe community for us all and that's really why we're here we're here to protect your stuff your family yourself and for those people who violate your property or yourself then you know that's what we get you know all the training and stuff for is so that we can hunt down the bad guys and put them in jail and, and keep you from being victimized does anyone have any questions on this no thank you guys so much thank you from the office of the police